But what we've been doing lately has evolved a lot from where we began. So EcoGather kind of began with the premise of creating, co-creating with communities in different places, a series of courses on a variety of topics from like agroecology and economics, well-being economics and chain shaping and all these things, but they were all kind of flat and lonely and you might even say boring because they were asynchronous um, online courses and we didn't really know what to do with them. Um, and there wasn't like, you know, selling courses didn't really feel like what we were trying to do, but it was sort of like the framework that the project was originally formulated around. Um, but there was a lot of really awesome material and content and ideas in these courses, and we wanted to figure out how we might um, sort of bring them to life a little bit more. Um, and one of the courses that is in that group that has managed to be a lot more lively and create create more community has been um, Sean Chamberlain's Surviving the Future course, which he's spoken a lot about um, in this conference as well in, in past years. And we just kind of found that that course had a lot more, like I said, livelihood and or they were it was just more lively and and creative and interesting and then people were more engaged. Um, and probably because it had more of like a cohorted um, community live session aspect to it than just having like something you click through on your own. Um, at some point, like we heard some statistic that like 90% of online courses are never finished. So um, having people to travel with it through is, is really helpful. Um, and so, but in the course of creating these courses, the team, our team, our internal team, we're learning so much from each other and from the people that we were co-creating these courses with. And we found so much personal growth in just talking to each other across our different experiences and expertise and interests. And we wanted to sort of recreate that experience. So my coworker and I, who has since moved on um, to other things, we would spend hours in our office that we shared just like trying to explain these different concepts to each other. She was a social scientist. I was more of a natural scientist. And we would just like find all these awesome places where our expertise or our experiences and our understanding of the world overlapped. Um, and we had so much fun, even though neither of us were like really experts in any of the things that we were talking about. We were just able to explain it to each other. And it was, we were just like having these breakthroughs. And so we decided we wanted to figure out how to recreate that for other people on Zoom and and have like a, a global network of these conversations that were, you know, dealing with these existential problems that we're facing and creating these paradigm shifts. So a little over a year ago, we started sort of experimenting with what we've been calling eco gatherings. Um, and the original formulation, I guess, was we wanted it to feel like we were in that office where there was string lights and we, we had tea and we were cozy on the couch. Um, and it would just feel sort of like mingling at like a party with the, all of the best people and having really deep conversations about different things. So we started hosting weekly gatherings on Zoom where there would be a few resources that people might be able to read in advance or listen to. And then we would sort of convene around a particular topic um, and then we could just sort of like get right to the meat of, of the thing since people would sort of be caught up. Um, and so format that we've established so far has been one that we've stuck with for the most part, which is when we get into these hour and a half sessions, um, there's a newsletter that goes out in advance to get people sort of primed for what we're going to be talking about. And we start with trying to like ground into the space. Um, well, before that, we actually have music playing and there's something pretty on the screen so people can sort of feel like they can trickle into like a party um, and people are kind of chit chatting and small talk before we like really get started. And we tried to create the sense that we're like really in this space by grounding in and having like a, a, a grounding where we listen together or breathe together, go through something like that at first. Um, and then we have like a short framing for the people that 
didn't have time to read the newsletter or the, or the resources because we want to keep it accessible to folks so that, you know, if you just drop in, that's also totally fine. Uh, so we kind of get people caught up to speed briefly. And then we go out to our different breakout rooms so that people get a chance to talk more one-on-one -on -one or a little in smaller groups with each other and then come back together and sort of swap ideas and then meet with new people. And we get to really like, like grow into these topics. And the one thing that we found in the course of, um, you know, I think it was maybe almost a year, six months, eight months that we've been doing them that an hour and a half really wasn't enough time to really get to the meat of what we wanted to talk about. We always felt sort of like we've been zoomed out of these rooms too quickly or that we just, we just like wet our appetites for these topics. So lately in an effort to both spend more time on certain topics and also to feel more in line with like, we want to decolon decolonize our relationship with time and also to feel like the natural rhythms of the world are actually dictating our lives a little bit more. You know, of course they are, but we sometimes don't feel that way. We've been trying to um, spend a lunar cycle on, on one topic. So each week we'll meet and we sort of line them up roughly with the, 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 you know, the new moon, we start a new topic, and then we go to a different angle of that topic. And then at the full moon, we can finally, like, really dig into one piece, one of these resources, because we'd often found that one of the readings that we assigned was really awesome, but nobody had time to read it, and we never really got a chance to talk about it. So on the full moon, you really focus. And then we also tried to spend um, one of the sessions, like, putting what we've been talking about into practice, because oftentimes we would talk about something and people would be like so inspired and, and buzzing and like, oh, now what? And then kind of just trail off. So now we're trying to be like, you know, what, what do we do about it? What, what can we sort of create together and feel a little bit more like we have like agency and um, action involved in, in the talking as well. Um, and yeah, so over the course of this year of doing these, it's been really awesome to see like, the connections people have made. There's been sessions where people end up crying or laughing and and like real friendships are forming across um, geography, across different generations. Um, in fact, it's always my favorite thing when people that meet on an eco gathering end up like, oh, you live in my city too. And then they like go and actually be friends in real life, which is such an awesome thing to see uh, happening. Um, and then the other thing that we like to do is we create the the newsletter in advance that explains everything. We compile all these resources and we send out an original piece of writing about the topic. And then we post all those resources online, which is the 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 point of which is to both allow people to revisit them and dive deeper when they want to, and even maybe take one of those boring asynchronous classes if they're really, really inspired. Um, but our dream sort of is to have people have a really awesome conversation online and then take those resources and use what we've already sort of packaged to host these kinds of conversations in their own place at their local library or a community center or something um, and just kind of spread the, the mycelial web. <laughs>